wake up, rise up, absolutely positively. I uh, I want to, and I always encourage you to uh, wake up, rise up, and get up. And uh, I'll tell you, I have done so myself. I, I have uh, over 400 and now 58 episodes uh, awakened right in front of you. And there was uh, a time right about uh, October or November of last year, literally, when I walked through a portal um, that that literally changed my life. It changed my life, changed my whole perspective on on everything. And you're going to understand what that means because this could happen to you right now. Uh, we have a lot of new listeners, but you may not have even heard um, of the name Dr. Judy Wood. But let, let me start off. Uh, a lot of you know who you are, and we've got callers on the line. We will be taking calls before the end of this uh, this segment uh, for, for those of you that, that would like to speak with her and know of her work. Um, but let me tell you, Dr. Judy Wood uh, earned her Ph.D. degree at Virginia Tech. She's a former professor of mechanical engineering. Uh, she has research expertise in experimental stress analysis, structural mechanics, deformation analysis, materials characterization, and materials engineering science. Her research has involved testing materials, including complex material systems in the area of photomechanics or the use of optical and image analysis methods to determine physical properties of materials and measure how materials respond to forces placed on them. And her area, area of expertise involves interferometry and forensic science. And she taught graduate and undergraduate engineering classes and has authored or co-authored over 60 peer reviewed papers and journal publications in her areas of expertise. Now, in the time since 9-11 of 01, she's applied her expertise in material science, image analysis, and interferometry to a forensic study of over 40,000 images, hundreds of video clips, a large number of witness testimony, analyses of dust sam sample, seismic data, and the analysis of other environmental evidence pertaining to the destruction of the World Trade Center complex. Dr. Judy Wood has conducted a comprehensive forensic investigation of what physically happened to the World Trade Center site on 9-11. And based on her analysis of the evidence she gathered in 2007, she filed a key TAM case for science fraud against the contractors who contributed to the official National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is NIST, the NIST report about the destruction of the World Trade Center towers. And she filed this case. The, the case was filed in the U.S. Supreme Court in December 2009. To this day, Dr. Judy Wood's investigation and body of evidence, as compiled in her book, is the only comprehensive forensic investigation in the public domain. And you can search for one on your own. And don't go looking at debunking videos on YouTube. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about forensic identification and investigation. Now, the book, Where Did the Towers Go?, uh, was sent to me in advance. I wanted to get uh, Dr. Judy Wood on because I heard a an interview on Alex Jones' show. And uh, the first time I ever heard her name spoken was by Jesse Ventura. He mentioned it on AJ's uh, show. And AJ just kind of tried to sweep it under the carpet. And yeah, 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 I know her. <laughs> sure. And tried to move along. But Jesse Ventura was adamant about the fact that he read a book called Where Did the Towers Go? And he was convinced that something very different occurred on 9-11 than what we were told. And ladies and gentlemen, what I have found since then, since that very moment, I took a look at the book, I glanced through it, cover to cover, and I said, oh my goodness, this is uh, really, uh, I, I looked at it as, and now I know it to be, indisputable evidence that must get out to as many people as possible. And I welcome back to the show, Dr. Judy Wood. Dr. Judy, welcome back. Hello, thank you for having me. And uh Flawless introduction, as far as I can tell. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I, I I guess I've um, I've learned my way through this. Uh, I, I really have, and I think you've you've seen that. You've seen me learn a lot since the first time I originally requested you coming on uh, on on the Pete Santilli show back in October or November of last year, and you took me through a methodical step by step process that really involved taking pause, taking a look at the evidence, shutting everything out, right? Um, and the important, most important thing is know that what you, what you know that you know and know that everything else you don't know <clears throat> and don't fill in that gap with speculation and guesswork. That's right. And don't allow so anyone else to take you down 
a path right. of speculation and guess, guesswork, right? Exactly. It's all about what you can establish that you know that you know. You know, I'm going to open up in an interesting way, and we have plenty of uh, archives uh, uh, conversations with you. Uh, and today, what I really want to do coming out of the gates uh, is, is to talk is, is to talk to the listeners. And I think I know I can I can describe this very very well. I want to talk to our our newest listeners that come into this thing. Uh, that will understand that those of us who have started to learn this process by which we actually came out of this PSYOP that we had been under, myself included, up until October or November of last year, that we had to deprogram ourselves as to not really listen, kind of like plug our ears and take a look at the pictures and take a look at the videos and absorb the evidence and not let anyone else tell us what we were seeing for us to determine for ourselves and that was the first thing that you taught me, was that plug your ears, look at this, and just absorb all of this evidence that you've probably never even seen before. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anyone. Don't look at debunking videos. Look at this evidence. This is what took place. Look at it yourself. And then once you absorb all of this evidence, then you will be able to make a well-informed decision at that point. Exactly. Right? Yes. Now, when you actually take a whole bunch of us that have been taught that, we are a group of individuals who are free thinking, right? We don't, believe, we don't believe or trust anyone. It's almost like we've been referred to as a cult because we've been demonized. And that's part of the whole process that we're going to talk about. And I have Andrew Johnson with us as well. Let me say hello here before we go to the break. Andrew Johnson in the UK. Andrew Johnson, are you there? I'm here, yes. Yes, sir. Check the evidence.com uh, is your website that is uh, – almost an encyclopedia of supplemental information. You've worked and studied Dr. Judy Wood's uh, information for many, many years, since 2006, is that correct? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yes, and uh, you join me here today because uh, a large part of what, part of what we're going to talk about today is this PSYOP that we've been under, and for the newcomer uh, that's going to come to this information, Dr. Judy Wood's book, Where Do the Towers Go? Most people are like, who's, who's Dr. Judy Wood? What's this all about? And you just step into a whole realm, and you need to learn your way through the maze of muddled information, as you call it. You taught me that term right in the very, very beginning before I even got the book. Be very careful how you speak of this stuff because you're going to muddle this information up, and it's going to have a detrimental effect on everyone else just coming new to it, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've been guilty of that myself, so, you know, I'm sort of talking from experience. <laughs> That's right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come back. Um, I'm going to uh, get an update from Dr. Judy. Uh, Dr. Judy Wood has been giving presentations uh, all over the world, for that matter, even online. I'm going to get, get an update from her. You're going to hear more about uh, what she has to say to you. Uh, and uh, we will get to a current event, and that is how alternative media is, once again, trying to quash her information, demonize it, say the wrong things. And you'll understand what I mean when we come back from this break. Stay right there. All right, we're back. In the essence of time, let's just cut right to it. This is what I'm going to do. I gave a, a, a pretty good introduction and also uh, to, I guess, to help educate. I'm not an educator. Dr. Judy Wood has educated me on uh, the importance of what I just said. And, and, and I, I hope I've done, and she is very professorial, and she's, uh, of course, helped me to convey this information to our listening audience because it's really important that I don't muddle stuff up. I don't use the wrong terminology because, like I said, we've been under a PSYOP. And for me to say the wrong terminology, like the towers collapsed, when in fact they didn't. But if I were to say that, you would think collapse in your mind. The towers did not collapse. And, and to, to know that is to see the evidence to the contrary. And Dr. Judy, um, I hope I've done a good job with the introduction and saying, saying the right words to most people that are just coming new to the, uh, the book, Where Do the Towers Go? Yes, you have done an excellent job. Um, I would like to start out with a statement that uh, I, I hear frequently from people when they say, I think we can all agree that the official theory on 9-11, you know, 19 bad guys with box cutters, is false. Well, I'd like to add, I think we can also agree that the thermite theory is false. I think we can also agree that the nuke theory is false. And we can also agree that the mini nuke theory is false. We can also agree that the mini micro nano thermite theory is false. And on that, but why are we looking at theories? Why not just look at the evidence? That's what my book is about. Just looking at the evidence. <clears throat> Empirical evidence tells the truth. 
And what empirical evidence is, is evidence that is there. Like you look at a thermometer on the wall, it, it, we're, we're ignoring the fact whether or not it's calibrated, but you look at the thermometer on the wall, if it says a 7 and a 6, okay, with an F after it, it's 76 Fahrenheit. It's not how does it feel to you, is it warm or is it cool? It's a discrete thing that anybody looking at it honestly will come up with the same same uh, observation. Now, people could be psi opted into thinking that that 7 and that 6 on the thermometer are something else. And it's really, uh, you know, it's it's been miscalibrated, so therefore add this and that. So they're busy changing your interpretation. But if you get back to just the pure evidence, the empirical evidence, that is the truth. And everything else must follow from that. And there's this uh, strange tendency that, that our, uh, <clears throat> put in quotes, educational system has taught people is to start with the answer and work backwards. What happens if it's an answer that's not on your list? Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the right answer. So they start with a theory, and then they go cherry-picking whatever details that support their theory. What happens if they've been led to that you know, idea to do that, if there's breadcrumb trails to there? Another thing is, do you think those who planned 9-11 just forgot to plan a cover-up? Well, that cover-up's going to be better plan than the original event, because the original event just happens one day. But the cover-up must last forever. <clears throat> you know, I've always wanted to ask you this one question, and it has everything to do with what you just said. And I've never asked you this question before, but I always have a lot of people out there talking about many nukes and nuke this and nuke that, and they're always trying to force that upon everyone that's around them. But I hear that. Now, as it relates to the, the, the billiard ball theory, which I know – that well, that's not a theory. It's a billiard ball example. It's, oh, it's just a mental exercise. Right. There you go. The billiard ball example uh, tells us that 1.5 million tons of debris that came basically turned to dust in midair um, should have hit the ground. But it, it, it took so much time for that to happen. Now, if nukes were, quote unquote, used in the basement, I hear that a lot. You still have 1.5 million tons of debris that's above it. But that, that needs to have like, been burned up or vaporized, but that didn't happen. It didn't burn up. There wasn't enormous heat. It, but, you see, you start, you know, working backwards from a conclusion, and you have problems that people tend to overlook. Mm -hmm. But if you start at the beginning and work forward, uh, you could, you know, the evidence, if you don't know what happened, keep looking at the evidence until you do. So tell the, our brand new listeners that are just now coming um, uh, to, to this new evidence, tell everyone about the billiard ball example and how that is uh, so important to understand. They say, know what you know that you know, and know that everything else you don't know, don't fill in the gap with speculation, and guesswork, and so forth. But it's okay to step in a separate box that doesn't get mixed in and just to try out parallel examples of things, just to, to check out a you know phenomenon. So you know, let, let's consider billiard balls. They're, the reason why I use those is that they're all standard issue except for a different color, we're negating the, uh, the cue ball, but everything else, you can tell them apart. They have a red one, a blue one, a yellow one, and they're the same weight, density, uh, shape. It's just different colors. You can keep track of one. So let's go through this mental model of timing. Let's say, uh, you know, for a parallel example of the towers, let's overestimate the damage and say the nine of every ten floors has got it out. Pretend you have somebody sticking their arm out on that every tenth floor. And they're holding one of these billiard balls. So somebody at the 110th floor drops the blue ball, and you're holding the red ball on the 100th floor. You can't let go of it until, it, until uh, the blue ball goes past, then you let go of it. And the person with the yellow ball 10 stories down can't let go of it until your red ball is passed. What this is looking at is just the timing issue. If the building, you know, I'm not modeling what happened to the building. If... You know, those those top ten floors, poof, turn into dust, as the, is evident in the videos from empirical evidence and also the images. If it goes splat and turns to dust, there's, uh, you know, what mass is there to, to is, there's not a continuing motion because there's no mass continuing. It's all froth, you know, foamed up into dust and it's gone everywhere. Mm -hmm. But let's say it has just enough energy to trigger the next floor going. It doesn't. It doesn't even have enough energy to, to pulverize one floor, but we'll pretend it does. 
And if it, ha- it, you know, it doesn't have enough energy to trigger the next floor moving, but we'll pretend it does. We're just looking at the timing. So if every 10 floors, that motion has to restart, and then it goes flat, turns into dust, and so forth, if you look at that with just this timing of billiard balls, and if you focus on the billiard balls, you're not messed up with thinking about flying dead bodies and horse and you've been trained to to feel. You just look at these these billiard balls in timing. They're not hitting each other, they're just used as timing devices. It's thirty one seconds to the ground. If it's every floor that you have a billiard ball being dropped, that's over that's like a hundred seconds, over ninety seconds. Uh, yet the ground shook for only eight seconds. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, also, if uh, you drop a bowling ball off the roof over the edge, it would take like nine and a half seconds for it to hit the pavement below. With no resistance? With, with just wind. Right, just, just, just the air resistance. And, that, and it's pretty streamlined, a bowling ball is. So, like, you know... Minimum, I'm, I'm, you know, guessing that with absolutely no resistance in a vacuum would be 9.22 seconds. So let's say, okay, you've got nine and a half seconds plus or minus for in air. <clears throat> but uh, the ground only shook for eight seconds. So if you have this pile driver going go bangity 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 bang all the way down, it's like, uh, you know, banging on the on the ground, you know, for for that duration. So the bedrock should ring like a tuning fork and be recorded at the seismic station. That didn't happen. And the ground only shook for eight seconds, and it didn't travel through the bedrock. That is another red flag. Now, it did not slam to the bedrock. The signal did not travel through the earth. If you have two half-million-ton buildings, lift them up off the ground suddenly. You know, imagine King Kong you know, chucks it up into space, Taking that weight off the ground, it's like getting off your mattress in the morning or getting off the sofa. It recovers from the from getting the weight taken off it. It bounces back. So if you take this big, you know, half million ton building suddenly and take that weight off the ground that's been there for decades, uh, you're going to create a surface wave. And that is all that was recorded at the seismic station. There was no bang onto the bedrock. So that's another issue. But it, whether it, it uh, shook for eight seconds because it took that long to take the weight off or the weight went off instantly and it took that long to dampen out, you know, I don't, you know, slice and dice that. But what it shows is uh, it, it, there's no way that tower slammed to the ground. The tower did not collapse. Let, let me and ask it, this. Is, is, <clears throat> is this accurate to say this? Uh, and, and we'll hear this directly from you. Is it accurate to say that it, it could not have been physically or scientifically possible for that amount of debris to come to the ground in that period of time. Uh, correct. Uh, in, in the way that people have assumed from a collapse, whether it was sliced and diced from bombs in the building, you know, sli- chopping up the building and dropping the debris to the ground, or if it was a natural collapse or whatever, it, you know, a gravity collapse from whatever cause, would take longer than that. The billiard ball example doesn't tell you how long it should take. It tells you that it should take longer than it it actually took. You know, as I say in my example, you know, you can use a simple example to disprove something. And I use this example of um, if I, you know, run to uh, the store, then run to a friend's house, you know, and then run to somebody else's house, run past the dog track, and run home, which is a circuit of 42 miles, all in two minutes. We have 30, 30, 30 seconds left here, and we're going to go to work. All you need to disprove that is to, to say the world's record for the, for the mile. Have you, for, have you ever – is, is, there, is, uh, there are scientists that know better, uh, uh, that, that know physics, and know the billiard ball example. Have they been resistant to, uh, to those uh, – to those principles, you presented it to them, and they were just like, well, no, they, they, they can't even be possible. Have they shut it out themselves? Yeah, I've, I've found that there's three things that keep people from seeing what happened. Number one is poor problem-solving skills, more common than you think. In other words, starting with the answer and working backwards. Number two, peer pressure, group think. And number three, they're terrified of the implications. 
Now, if you if you uh, kind of knew otherwise and understood the physics of the billiard ball thing, and you worked for NASA, w- would you uh, go to your boss and tell him about it? Can you imagine? That's right. Now, I bring that point up, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to uh, we're going to take a break here. Uh, over the right at the top of the hour, I'm actually going to take a couple of telephone calls as we uh, break for the news uh, segment at the Rents Network at the six minute mark. We're going to con- continue the conversation now. A lot of people have put their trust in scientists, you know, those with uh, clipboards, pens, and white coats are so trusted. Uh, organizations like AE 911 Truth and all this, the, the scientists that have come together have literally ignored most of the evidence that's contained in this book, Where Did the Towers Go? I didn't find out about it uh, from AE 911 Truth. I was following them for a long, long time. Now, we will talk about why that's so. And why you've been diverted away from the truth right after we finish this next break. Don't go away. Okay, at the uh, top of the hour here, as you know, uh, we break away to the Rents Network for their uh, top of the hour news break. And uh, we are here on the Gorilla Media Network at uh, 1201 on Monday, July 1st. I have the uh, the honor and pr- privilege once again. She's a very busy woman, of course, uh, Dr. Judy Wood. Uh, doing the, the work of the people. By the way, thank you very much for your service to our country, as always. I say that a lot. I mean, it's not... Uh, nothing cliche. I, I mean it uh, uh, sincerely. I thank you very much for your service to our country. And you never relent. You you are never deterred. Uh, you always, you're one of the most courageous, fearless, uh, relentless women that I've ever come across. We say this all the time. Um, and thank you very much, Dr. Judy, for, for being on here once again. Thank you. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, here before we uh, get to the break, I'm going to take... Uh, a couple telephone. Hopefully, we can get a couple calls in here. We have um, comment man. Comment man. Hold on one second. Comment man, you're live on the Pete Santilli show with Dr. Judy Wood. Good day, Dr. Judy. Uh, it's a, that's really a surprise for me to get to talk to you. I first heard you on Coast to Coast AM. On your, oh wow! Uh, and and I digested everything you told me at that time. Uh, Dr. Judy, is there any, could I call you Judy? Because I feel that you are a friend to not only mm-hmm. our country, but the world. Uh, no, because that's sort of NLP programming <laughs> in this situation. Great question, by the way, comment, man. That's a great question. Uh, we have... We have billions of brothers and sisters in this world, and literally all of us are enslaved by the people you're going up against, Judy, Dr. Judy. Do, do, you, mind and, if I inter- uh, do you mind if I interject, Dr. Judy? Comment, man. This is what I want to say to you. Uh, even even yeah. in, our, in our personal conversations um, that I'll have with uh, Dr. Judy, I call her Dr. Judy. When I send her a message on Skype, Dr. Judy, isn't this true? I, call, I refer to you as Dr. Judy. And, and I will absolutely positively recognize one thing. This is what I learned, is that the opposing forces that are out there, uh, they use a technique called decredentialization. And they will refer to her as Judy. And when you see people out there using that term, Judy Wood, the reason why they're doing that is to strip her of her credentials. You heard her credentials at the beginning of the show, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and I agree with you. Uh, in my heart, she's a friend. But I, with due respect, I will call her Dr. Judy Wood. Yeah, and not, not only for that, because she is such a friend and she taught me exactly the importance of, of, of making sure that we don't decredentialize. And we recognize who these other people are. They actually stand out like a bunch of trolls with blue hair and dunce caps. When they're out there referring to her as Judy, you know that they are the opposing force that is not well informed. Uh, they are working for another side, whether knowingly or not. Most of the top ones, like uh, Stephen Jones or James Fetzer, I mean, they know the importance of applying neuro-linguistic programming to condition people to refer to Stephen Jones as Dr. Stephen Jones and then refer to Judy Wood as, you know, Judy Wood versus Dr. Judy Wood. So because we're friends with her, we call her Dr. Judy Wood. Or it, let me try this out on you. If I was referring to little Joey... Versus Dr. Fitzgerald's you know, thoughts. How would you perceive the the, the, the two different uh, positions? Right. Little Joey. Uh, usually, when you refer, you refer to somebody by the first name, either it's you know personal on your own time, right. or it's what you refer to it you know a child in elementary school. 
so so with that, I mean, and, and, and this is a learning experience for everyone listening, is that we as a, uh, you know, a tribe of awakened individuals that trust absolutely nobody, we only believe what we research ourselves, and we listen to and get a hold of everything that we can, of course, we trust nobody. We call her Dr. Judy Wood because we know what the opposing side is doing to, to psyop everybody. They call her Judy Wood. When you hear somebody call her Judy Wood, you know they're working against her. Stay right there. So much stuff to talk about. We will probably end up going over just because I, I get so long-winded. But uh, I, I definitely want to touch on this. We were discussing this uh, during the break. Um, you know, there, I talk about AE 911 truth. I talk about, you know, Alex Jones in a very derogatory sense because, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, over 10 years, um, I was following these. I say over 10 years. For less than that, actually, 2005, 2006 is when I started realizing something went very, very wrong on 9-11. And, and then I started following the likes of like an Alex Jones or an AE 911 Truth. And guess what I learned? And, and this is this is a fact that I was diverted away from everything that we're talking about in this book, Where Did the Towers Go? It, I was intentionally under a psyop to look away from any possible evidence that would explain that free energy technology exists and was used on 911. And AE 911 Truth has been doing everything they can, including, um, you know, Alex Jones and AE 911 Truth to say, you know what, we're not going to be able to solve anything. Oh, well, let's just move right along. Nothing to see here. Let's just keep going along. They've even gotten to the point now, Dr. Judy, where they're calling for, quote, unquote, calling for an investigation. Is that correct? No, they, they call for a new investigation instead of these opinions. And I think that's what uh, the, the most recent audio clip was about it was implying that i just have opinions and so and and let's not uh get confused by opinions and ignore that until we sit and twiddle our thumbs and wait for another official invest you know official government investigation yes now uh, if you don't mind i'm going to bring andrew in real quick as we're going to transition yeah. to the psyop this is really really important andrew hi you also taught me you know from your perspective i mean you understood because you had followed people uh, on the other side, uh, and, you know, I, I try not to give them so much credit, but, you know, like AE 911 Truth, architects and engineers, that is, and all these scientists, you've always been out there trying to seek the truth. Yeah. And then you trust these folks, you know, I the did. scientists, and, yeah, and you, like myself, you know, we're, we're, we're not scientists. We don't have the credentials that Dr. Judy Wood uh, has that, um, that she's put in this book, Word of the Towers Go. But we discovered when we came across Dr. Judy Wood's investigation a forensic investigation that we've been diverted from the actual truth isn't that a fact isn't that what you've been able to yeah well that that's essentially what was happening and i suppose you know i've always tried to stick to looking at the evidence as being the primary process by which you discover the truth and what became clear over a period of time was that they weren't talking about the evidence they would divert off onto you know character assassinations or you know just other irrelevant topics and they'd actually start to ignore the evidence and a while ago you know i came up with this saying that i made up and it's uh, you know you can reach any conclusion about anything that you want but the uh, the value of that conclusion is inversely proportional to the amount of evidence ignored so in other mm -hmm. words you, you know you can just make a statement about anything and, and right. you can say that it's true but if you don't have the evidence to back it up then right. it's a, it's a, it's a worthless and it's a worthless statement and that's you know sort what of all that you know what i call that i call that a debunking video on youtube that's what i call that that's yeah. exact debunking video still is there so yeah intent on diverting you away from the evidence when you're looking at even a debunking video you have looked away from the evidence and now you're looking at somebody else's interpretation or you know or propaganda mm. but i think it, you know what, what, what it becomes clear that when you're getting close to the very important evidence they you know there's this other saying that the, the flak is strongest when you're over the target yeah. and that that appears to have been what's been happening that we've got this barrage of flack which has abated it sometimes but has been pretty much uh, uh, you know there for um, seven years getting on for seven years now since uh, I first became aware of what Dr. Wood had put on the table um, and I realized that she was able to explain 
many more aspects of the uh, you know what was seen at the World Trade Center than anybody else. Yet she was she was attacked for doing that, which which didn't make any sense because allegedly these people were looking for the truth of what happened at the World Trade Center and well, of course the other places as well. But that's the one where we had the most witnesses, we had the most evidence. So surely that that was going to be the place where you wanted to try and focus the largest amount of study. And uh, Dr. Wood was the That's only one that was really doing that. And, and, I, I, me, uh, and I'm sorry to interrupt just okay. for uh, the essence of time. This is like a, about a three and a half minute uh, clip here. It's, it's a current event, and it just so happens to coincide with uh, uh, your visit here on the Pete Santilli Show, Dr. Judy. But it is a current event. Uh, but a, a man uh, who I have trusted for many, many years, uh, who I became very, very upset at because I had never heard of any of the true evidence contained in the book uh, that contains the investigation, the forensic investigation of 9-11, he never once told me about any of this evidence, and I was very upset at this man right here. And even to this day, he is still working something that I call neuro-linguistic programming to divert everybody's attention away. But you know what? This guy's been found out. And uh, I want you to I want to comment. I want you to comment on NLP, and we're going to pick this apart here. But I want I want you to listen to this segment here uh, with a caller and uh, Mr. Alex Jones himself, how he handled it. And you're going to notice his very slick tongueery uh, as he applies NLP through this process of taking your brain away from Dr. Judy Wood. And you'll also note that he doesn't refer to her as Dr. Judy Wood, and that should be a, a number one sign of a dunce cap on his head. Uh, hi, Alex. Uh, long time. Porter and uh, uh, Tony in Florida, you have a question on Rand Paul. Welcome, thank you for holding, sir. Uh, hi, Alex, a uh, long time supporter and uh, listener. Um, the that wasn't my question actually, but uh, I have a question, I'll make it brief and I'll take okay. I'm sorry because because we don't usually screen calls, people have been volunteering what their question is. It says Rand Paul up there. Uh, no, that's a mistake. Okay, okay, well, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I'll take the answer off here. I've been a longtime supporter of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, and in 2011, I came across the work of an engineer uh, with evidence to the contrary. I assumed at first glance that uh, she was either a kook or COINTELPRO. Uh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. John Harmon just came on and said you said you wanted to talk about Rand Paul. Sir, we're not screening your calls. You didn't have to give us a fake story to get on and then come on and say I'm wrong. Did you or did you not tell him that you wanted to talk about Rand Paul? Uh, yeah, I didn't say you were wrong. I said it was a mistake. Uh, I, I figured I'd get the phone hung up on me. I was just calling to recommend the, an interview with Dr. Sir, Jimmy hold Wilson. on, hold on just a minute. Hold on a minute. Sir, we don't screen calls unless I say I want people to call in who are in this town that's on fire or something or there's a mass shooting on a university. Uh, you know, will you call us? That's the only time. Do you not believe me that 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 we don't screen people's phone calls? No, sir, and uh, I'll, I'll respect that. And No, no, uh, I don't sir. care. It just sounds weird. I mean, you know, it says, OK. I, I'm going to add a special note, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, something I'm going to interject. When I say NLP, and you're going to hear more about this before the end of uh, this session with Dr. Judy, the reason why uh, he doesn't worry about screening calls is because when he receives you, he is an expert on taking your brain into a completely different direction than where it needs to go. NLP actually does that. You'll hear this through this conversation. And Paul, if you volunteer it, I'll bring it up. Now, now start over with what you wanted to say. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll make it quick, and I'll take the answer off the air. Thanks for your time. Uh, uh, thank you. I was a supporter of architects and engineers and I live in truth for a long time. Mm -hmm. came, across, came across the work of Dr. Judy Wood in her book, Where Do the Towers Go? First, by hearing Je uh, Jesse Ventura on your show, I believe, in 2011, mention uh, her name. Um, her work is astounding, and the evidence shows that thermal and kinetic means were not employed in the destruction of the World Trade Center complex. Richter scale data is enough itself. It shows that the, there were no... Sure, so what's your question? Uh, if you'd have her on, and uh, regardless of your where you stand, if you'd have her on and, and have yourself... Sure, on. sure, sure. Let me answer that question. And I appreciate your call. I am the founder of Questioning 9-11. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop. Right there. I mean, I, I, can you on but Let's just pause, and let's just, just reflect... And just listen to what he just said just now, ladies and gentlemen. If that's not the most ludicrous thing 
that's ever been said in the history of alternative media. I don't know what is. The founder of what? Okay, let's continue on here. Unbelievable. There was NORAD stand down. The hijackers were trained at U.S. bases. That's Sacramento Bee, Associated Press. I, that means I question there needs to be a real investigation. You know, Bush and Cheney weren't under oath, blah, blah, blah. They then turned that into, Alex says, like Wiley Coat, Bush blew up the towers. So then again, they misrepresent. I say, hey, they've got weather weapons. It's on History Channel. That turns into, I say, Obama sent a tornado. So they build straw men around what I've really said about 9-11. I want to go with, hey, they said they blew up Building 7. We have scores of newscasts saying they blew it up. Then they say, don't say that. It's a conspiracy theory. When I have BBC, CNN, you name it, saying it. So I wanted to stick with that. People can debate and argue all day in 9-11 truth what they think happened. Not Judy Wood, and I've let Ventura come on and promote her. I mean, that's fine. I didn't say anything when he brought it up. I don't know her. I know some of the people associated with her got really vicious towards Stephen Jones, Professor, and other people. And then I got attacked by people saying I was covering up what happened, and I better have people on. So when I'm approached like that, I immediately just go, wow, this is like a weird academic fight, like different schools of Darwinism or something fighting with each other. I've just stayed out of it. Okay, uh, and that's basically the end of it. And then I'm attacked everywhere for just sticking to what I think is the most important evidence of prior knowledge and involvement. There's your answer. There's your answer. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break away here uh, on the Rents Network. We're going to stay uh, all the way through on the Gorilla Media Network. Uh, Rents Network, you'll be back right after the short message. Uh, Dr. Judy and Andrew Johnson, stay right with me because... We're going to pick it apart, but we're going to point out exactly what was just done to our brains through that little four-minute excerpt. We'll be right back. Stay right there, folks. Okay, we're going to stay here, um, and we're going to uh, talk uh, to Comment Man once again. Okay, hold on just one second. This is an important point. Uh, Comment Man, you understand what I'm referring to? There's, yeah, there's, I, there's no reason why there's no reason why whatsoever that he had to refer to her as Judy Wood. It's very specific, oh. very intentional. And the reason for that is because he has tens of millions of listeners that just heard his voice and the way he just pre-programmed everybody and decredentialized just by using the term Judy Wood. I, I understand that perfectly. And I, I never refer to Dr. Judy Wood to anyone that I'm sharing information. I, I put that on a personal basis. Yeah. And, no, and you didn't say anything wrong, but you understand the importance now, right? Oh, gosh. Oh, I, yeah, I'm yeah. a Robert Welsh, baby. I've been looking at the evidence for a long time, and it was so great to see Dr. Judy bring forth evidence and only evidence. And, uh, yeah. That's right. But, That's exactly right. Now, let me, let me put you back on hold, and I'm going to go back to uh, Dr. Judy and Andrew. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to insert here, Ed, that uh, – for me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, uh, that uh, there's this new uh, mindset that an opinion and an Internet connection make someone an expert. Well, Alex Jones is not a scientist. Uh, it, he can't solve a partial differential equation, I assume. Um, so does that mean that nobody can, that it's unsolvable? You know, and Dr. Judy, I, I don't want to um, I don't want to uh, to have you participate in the conversation I'm about to or the, the uh, answering the question that I'm about to ask Andrew. Um, and you just mentioned what he's not. He's not a scientist. And that's a given. Um, I right. would like to. Right. So so why does his opinion he, count more than mine? Here, we're coming back. Hold on. OK, okay we're we're back. And uh during the break, we actually went back to comment, man. We talked about, and you'll notice that Alex Jones specifically and intentionally, I believe, uh, used the same techniques that I think that they're all, there's a script that they all use, like always decredentialized, never refer to her as Dr. Judy Wood. They all do that. On I say the opposing side. Obviously, Alex Jones is on the opposing side of things because he's got too many DVDs that are factually incorrect, and and he's got too much to lose. So... He would never want to, and it's a shame that he says, oh, I know who she is, but I haven't really looked at Well, he's intentionally excluded forensic 
data, information, and he he he's a self-proclaimed founder of asking questions. Andrew, we know what he's not, and Dr. Judy said he's not a scientist. Let's talk about what I believe he is. Is he not employing NLP and the way he's trying to convince his listening audience as to how to take them away? I mean, he used this this spirally. I mean, it was just a very, very complex yeah. method taking his entire listening audience into a completely different direction, very well, skillfully. Yeah, that? I mean, he, he is very skilled at that. And, um, you know, he's clearly got his patter, as we would call it. He's like a salesman, you know, trying to sell you – uh, you know, d double glazing as, w as would be done here or sell you something on the doorstep. You know, he, he sort of comes out with this uh, very rapid fire sort of manner of speaking, not really bringing up the issue that was, uh, you know, meant to, was, was actually, you know, should have been talked about, diverting you off on something else in a very smooth and very skillful way. And uh, people get carried along with this, and people are even uh, to a degree hypnotised by it. And these these right. are some of the things that I've written about. And of course, the other character that uh, you know we, we've had run-ins with is Fetzer. He does a very similar thing. And if you compare Fetzer and Jones and listen to them, and listen to the way that they can manage a discussion, then uh, you know you you can you can tell how these things are going to go. And uh, you know when you sort of like for example, somebody was writing to us and uh, saying, "Well, we should, we should go on Alex Jones, you know, myself or Dr. Judy Wood or both." And uh, I, I basically would would not go on Alex Jones's show unless he uh, outright admitted that he was covering up the connection between Stephen E. Jones and the energy issue, which is key, a key uh, acknowledgement that people have to make. Uh, to indicate that they have, you know, really got the, the picture of what's what's go, gone on with the uh, with what's happened to the World Trade Center, and Jones co covers up that connection. In fact, in that brief clip, which is only three four minutes long, he even mentions Stephen E. Jones, and mm -hmm. he could have mentioned, you know, could have mentioned one of about twenty other people, but Jones is the the only other figure apart from himself that he mentions, which to me is very very interesting, and also part of that. NLP technique that when you know he's going into that flow of things and spitting out all that that those ideas that the mm -hmm. the, the Jones name is mixed in with that so that's what will get you know lodged in people's grey matter and uh, as being a positive thing you know and uh, it's now, just sir, it's just horrendous. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to uh, Dr. Judy and in the essence of time, I'm going to cut right to the chase to say that you know, Andrew knows, and a group of us know how important the name. Dr. Stephen Jones is in the way uh, uh, Alex Jones has pushed his audience towards uh, Stephen Jones because he's had a role in discrediting the free energy research in the late 1980s, has he not? It, that person is a very important person who has been involved right from day one from directing everyone away from free energy technology, have they not? Did you notice something? Uh, yes. Did you notice something uh, interesting that he sort of got into hiding ever since my book came out? Oh, oh, has he really? Is that he's, he's left the scene? He's not. He's not participating in, in it anymore. Yeah, and I think it is. It is very important that people go and research that if they're familiar with this thermite story. You know, and I, I actually did a talk in Leeds in the UK just over a week ago, and I brought this up because my talk was about the energy issue, and I have like. 10 minutes, 15 minutes on cold fusion, which should be called uh, low-energy nuclear reactions. And I've literally just answered an email from one guy who came to the talk, and I, I, you know, he'd been looking at all these videos, he regarded himself as well-informed, and he'd never heard of this. And I turned his world upside down by showing him these connections, which have been very well uh, covered up. And uh, so it's, it's vital that people go and research that connection and check that you know, what we're saying is true, which it is. And, and, and if, if they don't do that, they will not see this connection between energy and the energy technologies that have been covered up and, and what happened on 9-11. And that's why Alex Jones says, oh, well, you know, we just want to, uh, you know, agree that the official story is untrue and that's all that we're going to do. Well, Alex, you may want to do that, but I don't want to do that because I know that the energy issue is fundamental and it needs to be exposed and properly understood by people, else the world ain't going to change. That's exactly right. And and once again, back to it, because I believe this, this is uh, a very important question to understand. Because why? Because the listening audience needs to understand not just what happened on 9-11, but 
just like I said earlier, the, the most impactful statement I think I've, I've made uh, right, right in front of Dr. Judy Wood is that free energy technology exists. It was used on 9-11. And Stephen Jones in the late 80s, and, and if you could explain this and break this down for our listening audience, it's important for them to understand how Stephen Jones has been instrumental in taking us away from and diverting us away from a free energy technology and cold fusion. Can you explain to our listening audience what his role has been since the late 80s? I think Andrew could do it, but I, what I, the way I look at it is he just drops little hints and little suggestions and tries not to lie, but tries to get people to come to the wrong conclusion, the same way as 9-11. He will not state blatantly, I know for a fact that thermite was used. He will not state that. He mm -hmm. drops the hints and lets other people go forward with that. And, and the, the, way, the way that he did it with, you know, the thing we've got to explain a little bit is this cold fusion, which people have probably heard of, but basically cold fusion... Uh, it was named was, by Stephen Jones. It was, yeah, he it was named by job. him. Yeah, and there was a him and another chap who came up with this term. And Pons and Fleischmann, who were the guys that got all the uh, press attention, which was uh, not was positive at first, but turned negative when they, a smear campaign was launched against them. Um, it, we, they called it, um, the, I don't know if they had a specific, specific name for it, but it became known as low energy nuclear reactions. Low energy nuclear reactions. Now, we've got this word nuclear in there. Now, from Doctor, if you read Doctor Wood's book, um, and and she, you know, Doctor Wood brought this up in in the, in the recent talks that were done in Europe, was the the, the, at the in World Trade Center and the sort of remains, the water, that, there were some water samples that were taken from the remains, and within it's those. I mean, sir, it's been in my book all along, but yeah, right, I've right. recently started yeah, spending right. time it's been on in it. The book, yeah, to clarify that, it's been in the book since it was published uh, at the end of 2010, and uh, you know, it was added into the, the talks because we, you know, we're going to cut the away rounds. once again. Hold that thought, okay? We're going to cut away uh, to the network. We're going to stay. Uh, we're going to stay all the way through here. But um, uh, Rents Network, stay right there. We're going to cut away for this um, a short break, and we will be back. Gorilla Media Network, stay right there. We're going to continue all the way through commercial uninterrupted. Don't go away. I'm with Dr. Judy Wood, and we're talking about the most important thing, I think, of our lifetimes right here. Okay. Uh, and then we'll be interrupted here at, uh, hold on one second, at the 3245 mark. But um, uh, Dr. Stephen Jones and his role... Uh, and Pons and Fleischmann, it's yeah. really important that everyone is, understands. And, and I think the, 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 what's also important to understand is this, that a nuclear phenomenon was was happening during the destruction of the World Trade Center. That's a sort of clumsy way of describing it. But something, there was some process that was going on during the destruction of the towers which created uh, tritium, which is the subform of hydrogen, which is, uh, you know, uh, the simplest element. And um, also in the experiments that Pons and Fleischmann conducted in the late 80s, they were also getting anomalous levels of tritium in their in their results. And these results were reproduced by a number of people, um, one of whom was John Buckris with a team at Texas A&M University. So this tritium appears to be uh, one of the kind of fingerprints or markers of this other type of process which is which is not really properly understood by science and it would appear that Stephen E. Jones was tasked with covering up this phenomenon or muddling it up muddying it up and basically what he did was he did do experiments which was which were somewhat similar to Pons and Fleischmann he was using a process which was called muon catalyzed cold fusion as he called it Mm -hmm. and, and, and basically, as I've tried to describe it before, he basically, if you can imagine that, that, that you know, that, 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 that instead of doing experiments with nuclear uh, materials or nuclear effects, perhaps we might say, let's imagine that Pons and Fleischmann were building a type of engine for a car and Stephen E. Jones was building a type of engine for a car. And basically, Pons and Fleischmann built this wonderful engine, you know, which didn't use much fuel and it worked quite efficiently. But they still needed a bit more work to get it, you know, get it into something that which would, could be used in a real car as a real mode of transport. And, and, and their engine sort of ran on, on petrol, let's say. What Stephen E. Jones did with his experiments is he was developing a, another engine, but his engine, say, ran on diesel. And he, his engine didn't work very well. You know, it, he couldn't really get it going and didn't produce much energy and didn't work for very long. And so, therefore, what he said is 
it to the wider academic community is, look, you know, I've looked at this cold fusion phenomenon. In other words, I built this engine here, look, but my engine doesn't work, and I, I, there's no way I'm going to get it to work, so we can just leave it as, a, as something of academic interest. And, and then he said, you know, and my engine is similar to Pons and Fleischmann's engine, but because their engine is similar to mine, their engine won't work either, so just forget about it. You don't even need to look at it. That's essentially what Jones was doing. And so he didn't actually lie, you know, he did do experiments, he did investigate this phenomenon, but right. it was different to the one that Pons and Fleischmann were working on. And, and, and thereby he was able to, because of his smooth talking and his sort of choir boy image, um, Jones was able to sort of get more people on his side, whereas Pons and Fleischmann were caught on the hop because they weren't actually ready to publish their research when they were actually forced to do it because they were backed into a corner and they were forced to uh, have a press conference to announce this cold fusion process. Because jo Jones knew they were about to, to get somewhere, and he was going to an announce his thing before theirs, and which would prevent them from getting a patent on it, on theirs. Right, and the, the tech, as I understand it from a layman's perspective, is that, and you taught me this, Dr. Judy, is that Pons and Fleischmann, if everyone were sitting there waiting for them to produce something spectacular, and the anticipation was just overwhelming. And then somebody were to say, ah, well, it's just not going to work. See, you guys got all excited about nothing. So cold fusion is not even worth uh, your anxiety. They set them up for failure so that everyone would be just heavy sigh of relief. Uh, not not relief, but just Move along, nothing to see along. here. Right. So and they actually, actually um, MIT uh, replica replicated uh, or tried to replicate Pons and Fleischmann's work, but they, uh, the, what they published looked like they hadn't because they, it turns out they falsified the data to make it look like it didn't show an effect. And uh, that came out later. Um, uh, Eugene Malov discovered that, and he resigned as a full professor at MIT out of protest and started a, a separate uh, research company on his own. Let's pause briefly as we come back. Okay, uh, we're back. Uh, Rents Network, welcome back. We are with uh, Dr. Judy Wood and uh, Andrew Johnson from the UK. And Andrew Johnson understands what the importance was, and I'm going to just briefly summarize here. Uh, Stephen Jones and, and his intentional diversion away from the possibility that free energy technology exists. Why, why would he ever do such a thing? Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of money from the oil industry and the electrical industry. And they can't necessarily put a meter on it, as they say. You know, as uh, it's free. That's right. It's free energy, and it would be available to the masses. And they they couldn't uh, keep you enslaved if they were to give energy away for free. Uh, so Stephen Jones was instrumental in making sure that everyone who was anticipating some great news about free energy technology coming out of the research of Pons and Fleischmann, that everyone would be looking at that. The anticipation would be overwhelming. And they wanted to set them up for failure so that everyone would say, especially thereafter, that, ah, oh, cold fusion is just a bunch of malarkey. Don't look over there. It doesn't even work. Look over here. Please get plugged into our electrical and petroleum scheme. Correct? Right. Yeah. Is, what, there's a, a quote I have in my book that's one of my favorites. Uh, it says, we are never deceived. We deceive ourselves. And think of how magic shows work. It wouldn't work very well if they lied to you. What it is, is they get you to make the wrong assumptions and deceive yourself. That's, That's it. And, you know, I think that the way that these people operate is they know how people's psychology works. They know the trigger points that they can kind of, you know, it's almost like a, a form of hypnosis, as, as I already said, that they can suck people in. You know, and I was... I was fooled by Jones. He invited me to join the Scholars for 9-11 Truth group, you know, which I assumed was a was going to be a, a, a legitimate kind of group of concerned people. And so I, I was working under that assumption. This guy, you know, was from Brigham Young University, and I thought, oh, he's a genuine guy. You know, he he really wants to know the truth. And and the the horror is that this guy did not want to know the truth. He was actually he wanted to keep the truth covered up. It was actually the exact opposite of what I thought. And it's very difficult, you know, when you come into that situation because you're wanting to find fellow people who share the concern that you do and they share the concern for finding the truth. And then you, then you find out that these guys are actually worse than, uh, you know, some of these politicians.
because oh, they yeah. they actually have more knowledge. Some of these politicians don't actually have any knowledge. But people like Jones clearly, in my mind, must have some knowledge of what actually happened to the towers. No, they're double armed. They're double armed with an education, with a oh, triple armed with you know education, the knowledge of what exactly what they're doing, and then they skillfully apply this wordsmithing to almost hypnotize their audience to to look away, to right. look away. If you don't mind, I need to play, and we're going to be pressed for time here. Uh, let me play this uh, excerpt here. This is actually Stephen Jones in concert with the Psy Opera in Chief, Alex Jones himself. Here he is. First off, will you just for the listeners that don't know who you are, give us your background, some of the publications you've written for, sure. some of the research you've done. Sure. Um, now well, let's uh, go back to uh, graduate school. I was a graduate student in physics, got my Ph.D. from Vanderbilt. Did most of my research, though, at uh, the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center and finished up my coursework at Stanford since I was out there doing the research. Um, what else? Can I, and then I did postdoctoral work at Cornell and, uh, let's see, uh, Los Alamos National Lab. Well, you know, I've been around the block a few times. I have a publication in Scientific American with a, a dear friend of mine, uh, Johan Rafelski. That was back in 1987, July. You want to look that up? The title of our article is Cold Nuclear Fusion. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> We're talking there about uh, muon catalyzed fusion. Just, uh, just a lot of fun. For a number of years, I was the principal investigator for the Department of Energy on this study of uh, muon catalyzed fusion. Amazing. So you've had it up investigations for the government before. Yeah, yeah. And now well, you've, for, you know, Department of Energy uh, funded our research. That's right. And I now I proposed it. They funded it. Sure. And now I think it's safe to say that you are heading up research for the 9/11 Truth Movement on the bizarre collapse of Tower One, Two, and Seven. Uh, that's a fair statement. Uh, working with others, of course. Let me, if you don't mind me explaining in the way that Pete Santilli explains, I want you to listen to me, okay? If you are an unsuspecting fourth grader. And you were listening to a man like Stephen Jones. Oh, isn't he a sweetie? He's just, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine actually yeah. said that. You need to. And, and, and really, picture this, uh, that uh, a lot of Alex Jones' uh, fans are listening to that. And this sounds like a mild-mannered guy that's just really like Mr. Rogers in his neighborhood. Just telling you, matter of factly. And, and then you got Alex Jones, who is so anti-government for how many years? For 15, 20 years? Now saying... Wow, Stephen, you're what you're saying is that you worked for the government? Wow, that's great information. Jeez, you are really, really qualified to be telling us everything we need to know about what happened on 9-11. I'd like to insert something here that someone taught me early on. So that the best ops do their business out in, in broad daylight in the wide open. That's, that way you can't point. discover something on them. That's a great point. This is happening uh, out in the open, ladies and gentlemen, and what is also happening out in the open, and I, and I have to I have to bring this up. We have been all of us, and you may be brand new to this information, and you're curious. Okay, now let, let me ask you something. If you now, not having known anything about Dr. Judy, right now you are googling just like I did when I heard Dr. Judy Wood. Who is this? Jesse Ventura men mentioned it. Why would Alex Jones not want to dig and know? Everything that he needs to know about Dr. Judy Wood. You'll notice that how many years after hearing the name Dr. Judy Wood, how many years after that, has Alex Jones says, "Oh, I know a little bit about her, but I, you know, I stayed away from it because it's a Dar it's a Darwin theoretical thing going on between scientists." No, this is not a theoretical debate. This is a matter of Dr. Judy Wood wanted to, wanting to bring evidence. This, this is not a theoretical process we're going through. We want people to look at the evidence. Alex Jones and Stephen's jo Stephen Jones want you to look away from the evidence. They will do and say anything to make sure that you don't see anything contained in the book. Where do the towers go? And they do it right out in the open. You are still under the psyop by listening to Alex Jones. I believe that to be true. What do you think, Andrew, Andrew Johnson? Well, absolutely. And I think uh, unless you keep digging and checking these people out, and, 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 you know, when you hear somebody on the radio or whoever it is 
listen to what they've got to say and if it seems you know try and consider why they might be saying it and why this information is being presented to you at this particular time and and it applies on the mainstream you know fox news and all that you know all those silly outlets but it, it also now because alex jones has such a big network now it also applies to him and his guests because that is now essentially controlled uh, essentially the information that is passing through there is largely controlled perhaps the control mechanism is slightly different than that oper operating in the mainstream but it, in my experience now it's, it's not a lot different and they're trying to put in place through people like Alex Jones another mindset for people to fall into and I, and, and I think it's this new world order mindset you know that, that we've, there's is no escape from that. important of a segment for me to cut off uh, Patrick is going to stand by uh, we're going to come back, and I do need to take a couple of callers. Stay with me, and we'll conclude this segment and then get on to the Bunker News break with Patrick Henningson. Too important of a segment. Stay right there. Don't go away. Okay, okay ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stay right here. Uh, uh, Patrick Henningson, uh, hold on just one second. I need to give him courtesy here. Patrick, um, I'm going to I'm going to bury this guy, okay? Uh, I really need to stay on this. Go for it. Yeah, I really, really do. Just hang with me. We'll get to the Bunker News break, actually, at uh, at the top of the hour, okay? Thank you so much. Go for it. Uh, Mike Bannister, you are live with Dr. Judy Wood, sir. Hello. I uh, I just wanted to call in and say uh, one thing I noticed in that Alex Jones clip. Uh, he's he's just uninformed, really. I mean, the thing is that you know they're still on the uh, there was a third tower that fell thing. You Look, know, can, can I interrupt you? Can I interrupt you? Can I interrupt you, Ryan? Ryan, let me interrupt you. Yeah. Okay. He, he seems, okay, he wants to project that he's uninformed. But somebody who is a self-proclaimed inventor of asking questions about 9-11 and then answering them with millions of dollars in CD sales and DVD sales, okay, a master at the minutia of the 9-11 information for 10 years plus can't all of a sudden say that he's too stupid to know what's contained in the book, Where Did the Towers Go? He's pretending. But he's not. Keep in mind, I, yeah. I didn't say uh, he wasn't willfully uninformed. Yeah, there you go. Um, but he, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, he uh, he simply is still on the the third tower that fell. The WTC seven collapsed. Well, I'm sorry, there were seven towers. Uh, who's talking about that? Um, it's That's not exactly just about right. WTC seven. It's about whole stamping structure. I'd like to also add, it, he wants a new investigation, right? Well, then why doesn't he read my book? Right. I, do, does he not recognize that investigations have happened and, and that you have uh, chrono, uh, made a great chronology of witnesses like Patricia Androvic, who didn't even realize the planes hit, um, Patrick Connolly, uh, who saw spontaneous car fires. I think really uh, your book uh, establishes a new, a new revelation of 9-11 that he might be unwilling to uh, to recognize, uh, but he's definitely uninformed. And and essentially, when he says he's the founder of questioning 9/11, well, what about um, what about Patricia Andrevik? Did she not? About the founder of answering questions. <laughs> I, <witness. laughs> mm. I think the thing to understand is that Alex Jones, uh, his job is to divert away from this, because uh, somebody commented on that YouTube clip. Uh, that, that uh, of the original Alex Jones clip that we played. Um, when this gets out and people understand it, it's the end for the control system, because energy is one of the fundamental ways in which we're controlled, along with you know the food and uh, and also the the weather uh, issues that come up as well in this in this research. When those get out and are more broadly understood, it's just that's just the end of any uh, you know sympathy that people might have for the people that are actually uh, running this planet um, because they are you know literally remolding the cage bars oh. Oh, from moment to moment here we go we are back i have a caller on the line uh ryan banister's on the line he is a uh he's an advocate of all the information he's learned uh, from the book where did the towers go and he's a caller on the line with uh, dr judy wood and a andrew was bringing up a couple of very very um, important points that that they have to do everything, including, uh, you know, I, I can't prove such a thing, but I'm sure that Alex Jones wouldn't do it for free. I'm sure he has some sort of incentive 
to cover up the fact that free energy technology exists, and he's very resistant to bringing that forward. Why? Because the best way for them to keep us enslaved is to keep us on the petro slash electro market. Um, and Alex Jones is instrumental as a treasonous bastard in covering that information up continuously. I believe his career should end today because of what he said here recently. But Andrew, it's very important that all of these people come together. There's a lot of money to make sure that this information that we're talking about does not get out for the people. God forbid we were to let free energy technology be released to 7 billion uh, people in in the world. God forbid that should happen. The Saudis would be out of business and Edison would be out of business, wouldn't they? Absolutely. I mean, it's a very complicated issue when you get into it. But uh, certainly if, if the free energy technology, the awareness of it became, you know, more uh, widespread, then the whole of the foundations of our organized culture would would be, would be shifted. Now, what, how that would unfold, you know, is anybody's guess. And, I, and I've had conversations with people that don't think it would be a good thing, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the fact that this is not happening rapidly is, is, is necessary, that it's got to be a sort of slow process of, of realization. So, you know, because because if you look at the damage that's been done to the world by careless people, you know, not 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 just the people that are running the planet, then it's you know, I mean, I've I've made the simple analogy that you walk down the street or whatever, or walk in the park, and you see the rubbish dumped everywhere. People just being irresponsible with uh, you know actually putting down bits of rubbish and tin cans and things like this, or bit vandalising things. And so what would they do if they had access to unlimited energy? You know, could they really handle this sort of responsibility? And I think Dr. Wood has spoken about that as well, that we, you know, we would need to learn respect for this sort of technology. But we know that the people running the planet don't have respect for it because they used it to destroy the World Trade Center. And that's not a responsible way of using it, surely. Certainly not. I, I use the analogy of, you know, you make sure everybody in the family uh, knows what a gun can do and that it's permanent before you leave the gun cabinet locked. Mm. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's, a, that's a very sort of straightforward analogy. Now, I also want to make sure that uh, in the remaining moments here uh, that we have with Dr. Judy Wood, you need to know that uh, if you go to uh, the PeaceAntilliShow.com, uh, you can click on Where Did the Towers Go? You can purchase a copy of the book, a very small portion of that. Uh, goes towards uh, us uh, uh, processing the book order, or you can go directly to where did the towers go dot com. Go direct uh, to Dr. Judy Wood, uh, and you can also go to uh, check the evidence dot com to find a wealth of information on Andrew Johnson's website that he's collected since what two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah, around right about that. Yeah, around right about that. Two thousand five, two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Um, the this book, uh, I have always said this, and people have actually, I mean, I've even in um, uh, in controversial articles that have been put out there, uh, I have been demonized for having said, yeah, as a quote-unquote conspiracy theorist, they've referred to me as, as um, in, in, in saying that this book, Where Did the Towers Go?, uh, as Ashley has put it, is the most important uh, book since the Bible. Why? Because the evidence contained in that book shows, and I'm going to say this again, shows that free energy technology exists and it was used on 9-11, and it's not a theory. It's chock full of evidence that is indisputable. You cannot dispute this information, nor has it been, Dr. Judy. Has it ever been disputed? No. The only thing that is disputed is the false propaganda that debunkers put out there. Then they debunk their own propaganda. Like they debunk laser beams from outer space. Well, my book isn't about laser beams from outer space. As a matter of fact, I can you know, uh, exclude laser beams from outer space as being involved because the buildings were not cooked to death. Mm. I just look at the evidence, you know, what you can rule out. But, uh, you know, if you look at the evidence, the evidence will tell you exactly what happened. If you don't know what happened, keep looking at the evidence until you do, because the evidence always tells the truth. But the key is not to allow yourself to be distracted away from looking at what the evidence is telling you. You know, one, one term I've been hearing a lot about, and I want you to, to speak to this if you don't mind, um, and we're talking about NLP and the terms that are used to decredentialize and divert us away. One term, and you see that their PSYOP is evolving based on how we're coming awake. The more people come awake, the more we know. That's how they're developing their presentation. It's molding and shaping based on what we know. 
And I've heard a lot of people use, they say theory. When they say Judy Wood, they say in the same sentence, theory. Her theory, this. Judy Wood is talking about a theory about this. That's also a technique. But your work has nothing to do with theory, correct? Correct. It has nothing to do with theory. It has nothing to do with conspiracy. Conspiracy involves two or more people planning to do something illegal together. I don't talk about who done it. So it's not about a conspiracy even. It's not, it doesn't involve a theory. It's just evidence. But it is conclusive evidence. It's like calling a, uh, a, a, a what do you call it, um, an autopsy, a conspiracy theory. <laughs> no, an autopsy just says what's there. That's right. It may be conclusive. It may not be, depending on how good the, the data was. But, uh, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's evidence. If um, I take a, a, a yardstick out and – or, or tape measure, and it's only six feet long, and I run out of tape measure before I get, go from the ground to the top of your head, that's evidence that you're over six feet tall. That's not a theory. It's evidence. It's not a theory. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, I've been told by some of the top psyopers, psychological operators in the entire world, self-proclaimed, by the way, um, that, um, you know, that if we took all of your evidence, we took it to court, uh, it could never, ever be proven in a court of law because of national security reasons, that there's too many national security elements that would prohibit your information from coming forward. Now, it, can you speak to that? I mean, this is evidence that everyone on the planet would want to know about. Why would a court system ever say for national security well, reasons? There, there's, two, there's two things. I did uh, submit it to, into a court case, and the judges in the Court of Appeals were respectful enough that in their written decision, they acknowledged that the law applied to my case, but for the ease of dismissing the case, they were ignoring the law. Why would, why would a judge do that? Uh, you know, if it's for national security purposes, and they state that, well, the cat's out of the bag. Because this is somebody's classified technology. I'm not saying whose, but it's somebody's classified technology. You can't have that behind closed doors without saying that, and the cat's out of the bag. If the doors are open, the cat's out of the bag. The only way to keep the cat in the bag is to do what the judges did, is to uh, you know ignore the law to dismiss the case. They could not uh, dismiss it legitimately. And, okay, the other thing is, like what Gordon Duff says, oh, but she, she just has theories. She can't prove her hypothesis or theories or whatever in court because uh, you know, she has no evidence. She doesn't know the serial numbers of the gizmo. That, why, why, you, uh, why, why is he presenting some bar I have to hop over, over here or over there? Like, I, I'm going to have to be able to identify every single hair on the, on the person and make sure all, it all are accounted for or something – why is he giving a different um, qualification? I can prove that some type of energy weapon was used. I can prove that that exists. Well, Gordon, I'd like to a ask Gordon you. Gordon Duff himself, uh, re regardless of what he's done in the past uh, with what limited information he's uh, had himself, Gordon Duff himself has even admitted, uh, Dr. Judy, uh, to me, and I actually recorded the telephone conversation, as you already know. He's already admitted that all of your information is correct, but the world is just not ready for this uh, factually correct information. Right, but in that conversation, he he said that, uh, but you couldn't prove it in court, and you know because it's classified technology, as though I couldn't wheel the, the the equipment into court and say, see here it exists, and so she can't prove its existence. But there's something he's he's uh, trying to divert people away from, still trying to trying to cover it up. That you know, I'd like to ask you. Uh, you've looked at all the evidence. Do you think there's evidence that shows that uh, more than 50% of the building uh, uh, turned to dust in midair? Oh, absolutely. Uh, indisputable. No doubt. Okay. In my mind. So, so does there exist a technology that can make it do that? Obviously so, yes. Right. If you said it, it, it didn't, then you have a problem because then you're saying something happened that was impossible. Mm -hmm. So obviously it happened. That is proof that something that can do that exists. That's so right. call it whatever you want to call it. We have the two, Gizmo we have can two, do that. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have two minutes. I want to make sure. Just go back to Andrew real quick. Andrew, at checktheevidence.com, uh, what's the most important piece of information that people can go get on 9-11 um, uh, information? Well, if I'm pushed for time, I usually uh, tend to try and show the videos and the pictures of this 700-foot uh, section of, of steel columns turning to dust. Because once you acknowledge and understand that, you can see that's actually an aspect of whatever technology it is that's in operation at that point.
So it's, okay. it's, it's, it's the clearest sort of visual indication to me. I mean, you know, Dr. Judy might uh, disagree with me, but uh, to me that's one of the clearest indicators that, that's very strange. And, and, you know, and when that's been shown to groups of people, they'll, they'll often gasp with astonishment at seeing that. And, and hopefully that, 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 that gasp can kickstart their brains into, into, into really, you know, looking at the problem. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Judy. Yeah. Dr. Judy, if you can just yeah. conclude here. Um, so, I'd, I'd like to point out to people that, but because that is such a slam dunk of a piece of evidence, right. uh, the the opposition has said that, oh, the, the, that was dust that settled on the columns, and so when they fell over, the dust was so fine it hung in the air. Where, Think about that logically. If it's so fine that it hangs in the air, how does it settle on the columns? Where did the towers go? Is it textbook with evidence, forensic evidence, that free energy technology exists and was used on 9-11, uh, what are our next steps? We're either uh, a, a person that's read the book or uh, or we haven't read the book. Obviously, we need to get a copy of the book and decide for ourselves and, and observe the evidence. But what can you offer our listening audience as to what they can do to help support your efforts to get this information uh, out in the open? Get two books. A lot of people do that. Get two books, one to loan ah, to people. Man. That's outstanding. Yeah, and also for those that, that can't afford books, I have DVDs, which I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll send them for like over to the States for like a do just over a dollar. And most of that's, you know, the shipping costs. Um, so people can get DVDs if they can't afford books. And, and my, you know, my only thing that I feel capable of doing right now because of the implications of this is just sharing the information and making that sharing as, as cheap uh, you know, as, as possible. Great. Andrew, that's all we have time for. Dr. Judy, thank you so much. And I'm glad we went over. Uh, we had to do this. And I thank you so much. And we need to have you on thank more you. often. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that concludes uh, the Rents Network. Of course, we'll be back here on the Gorilla Media Network for the Bunker News Break brought to you by 21st Century Wire. We'll be right back.